Now here's a question for you, which guitar player never fails to put a smile on your face? Now, different musicians speak to us individually. Sometimes we're shocked when a fellow guitar player just doesn't get a player who to us seems like a real great. And for me, it comes down to how a certain player makes me feel. And the guitarist I want to look at today never fails to draw me in. He always provides inspiration uh, for my own playing. So I want to share with you why I love George Barnes' playing and three things that I've learned from him. Now, you may find there's a few things that you want to borrow too. One of the main reasons I love his playing is that he's the master of the unexpected. Check out this really cool line that he played on I can't believe that you're in love with me. Now I play that song with one of the bands that I play in and whenever we play that tune live, I always look forward to playing that bit. George was born in 1921 and died in 1977. He played on sessions with Big Bill Brunsey, Louis Armstrong and even Bob Tillon. He also did great work with Ruby Braff, Carl Cress and the legend that is Bucky Pizzarelli, just to name a few of the greats that he played with. Now, George was a guitar player that's career saw him as a band leader, a sideman, an incredibly talented arranger and a prolific session player. As a result, I don't think there's many jazz guitar players who recorded such a diverse range of music. Now, I've put together a playlist on Spotify of my top 50 Barnes recordings, or maybe I should have titled that the top 50 Barnes recordings that are available on Spotify. So you might want to check that out. Now, onto the first thing that I love about George's playing, what I've called his signature moves of frivolity. Something you hear throughout his career is a really interesting use of slides, and lots of them too. Now, here's an example from a live recording of Honeysuckle Rose. Uh, the notes have so much more impact with these slides. <laughs> He also used slides to make a melody pop. Here's his playing on Have You Met Miss Jones. Now this is actually part of his solo and it's a big indicator of how melodic his soloing was. In addition to his creative use of slides, he also wasn't afraid of using bends and vibrato. And I think the combination of these techniques really gives his playing a whimsical quality. His lines are memorable, his playing is memorable for that reason. And it's different to how a lot of other guitarists have approached soloing in a jazz context. I think if you look at a lot of jazz textbooks, you know, method books and lessons here on YouTube, there wouldn't be many people talking about bends and vibrato. In fact, the opposite, they'd probably say, leave that alone, that's to preserve for rock and blues guitar players. Now I happen to think that those techniques really do get to the individual character of a person's playing. It's, it's very hard for instance to copy someone's vibrato and their bends, and maybe even their slides too. It's a way to inject some individuality into our playing. And I think sometimes we can say less, we can use less notes and focus more on the way we play those notes to give our playing more expression. Now onto the second reason that I love George's playing, and that is the fact he was such a melodic player. Now some players have a better sense of melody than others. This is subjective, but for me, GB's playing speaks to me because he was chasing melodies and he was a master of the art of phrasing in my opinion. His soloing often feels like one long variation of the melody, a continuation and extension of the melody, if you like. This for me is someone playing the song rather than feeding their ego about how they're, you know, creating or crafting an incredible solo over the changes. One way that he achieves this is the fact he's a big user of motifs and call and response based phrasing. Check this idea out from his recording, uh, live recording of There Will Never Be Another You. And on this recording, an insane arrangement of I Can't Give You Anything But Love, which only lasts for 1 minute 55, but runs through four keys. Now, what's the effect of phrasing like this? Well, for me, it gives solos a sense of structure. It feels like more of a journey or like a good story. It's not about what fancy mode scale or arpeggio sub is being used. It's all about melody. And I think George's solos are, as I said earlier, just a continuation of the melody. And this is great for listeners. It gives them something to latch onto. As students of jazz guitar, this is also very heartening. I think the world of improvisation, when it's taught, it's a topic that's often overcomplicated. In the hands of some jazz improvisers, solos can feel like just a stream of consciousness, just 
wall of notes. That obviously has a place. It's just not my kind of jazz. I'm just a much bigger fan of the players, whether it's guitar players or other instruments, that cherish the melody and really put that central to the way they phrase. And phrasing is a massive part of how convincing our ideas come across. Call and response is often lumped in with being a basic blues technique, but it's, it's a fantastic tool that gives a solo a sense of structure. Take a listen to some of George's recordings, especially live recordings, and you'll see exactly what I mean about how melodic his playing was and the role of motif-based ideas and call and response. The final reason I want to share with you why I love George's playing today is a very simple idea, but it's very effective, and that is the play a note more than once method. Not a book that is going to be published anytime soon. Now, a lot of the early electric guitar pioneers were influenced more by horn players than their contemporary guitar players. The tone and volume you can produce from, say, a trumpet. The notes have just so much more impact than a guitar going... I think as guitar players we often make up for this, often by playing lots of notes or just tedious noodling as some might call it, but check out the way George here sticks with one note. This is great, it's so simple, it's really effective and it sets up this tension for the listener as to when are things going to move away from this note. Now you must listen to this recording, it's from a live concert with Bucky and it features one of the craziest things I've heard on a jazz recording, a chord solo that sounds like something out of a rock gig or something you'd hear a certain Kurt Cobain playing 20 years later. Now returning to George's emphasis of, of one note, why don't a lot of us guitar players do this? I think it's because of how we're taught arpeggios or scales, where we play each note once. If you listen to the great saxophonists and trumpet players and clarinet players of, of jazz, you'll, you'll notice quite often they will just stick with one note for a little while, um, with interesting rhythms and so forth, and George definitely incorporated that into his playing. He'd also do things like where he would play an arpeggio or a scale and he'd play each note twice. Check out this inspired run on his Halloween tune, Spooky. Yes, he even wrote a Halloween tune. I think these lines have real impact and I just wanted to share this idea because I think it's easy just to run from one note to the next sometimes when actually we could stay with a note for longer than we might think. So that's my three things that I love about George's playing. Hopefully you'll find some things in there that inspire you too. Now don't forget to check out my Spotify playlist to listen to my favourite GB recordings. And finally, it would be remiss of me not to mention the fantastic website put together by George's daughter, Alexandra, the George Barnes Legacy. There's tons of things to check out there if you would like to find out more about George. Now, if you want to learn more about George from myself too, then check out this analysis and transcription of a solo I did last year. I'll put that on the screen for you. And don't forget, jazz guitar lessons every Wednesday. Until next time, you take care.